Hi and welcome to episode 8 of Noob Eden. Last time we were together we looked at the four layers of situational awareness. Local chat, directional scanner, the grid overview and your tactical overlay. We're going to take all of those together today and try and put them into an actual um, little low sec mining mission to see if we can stay alive. We may die, let's just see what happens. Of course, the ideal scenario would be to find a system that is empty and mine away knowing that you only need to keep an eye on local for anyone coming in to potentially attack you, which is great, but not always realistic or available. So I've found a system which is fairly quiet. There are two others in system. Let's see if we can survive doing some mining in this low sec system. Before we do that, though, I want to add something uh, to our sense of awareness and that is using our d-scan to check for combat scanner probes now I've talked to you before about the fact that we can sit in a safe spot like I am now and we are relatively safe however you can be found if someone uses combat scanner probes to scan you down so we need to add them to our directional scanner because at the moment we, we created this um, ship's overview so that we can have a filter on our D-scan that only shows ships. I realize we probably should add to that combat scanner probe so that when you fire off your D-scan, you can see if anybody is trying to scan you down. So let's do that. I've selected my ship's overview. I'm going to open the overview settings. I'm going to type in probe... And you'll see under charge, there is a tick box for scanner probe. I'm going to save that. I'm going to overwrite my existing ship's profile. So now when I fire off my D-scan, I'm sitting in my safe spot. I'm firing off my D-scan. I see no ships, nor probes. I'm very safe. But if I fire off my D-scan and I see this, anything that says combat scanner probe, then it's time to move. That means someone is actively trying to scan me down. Now, there are two types of probes. There are core scanner probes and combat scanner probes. It's only the combat scanner probes that are a problem. Core scanner probes are, we are not for locating ships. So if you see a core scanner probe, you're okay. And just to show you the difference, if I descanned and I saw core scanner probes, relax. That, uh, they are probes that are being used maybe by an, uh, an explorer to try and track down uh, cosmic signatures. So you're okay with them. It's the combat scanner probes that are the problem. Hey, while we are on the topic of tweaking our overview, let's jump over to our mining tab, which shows us asteroid belts. And we need to add something to that because I realized that the default mining overview tab does not show ships which is a problem when you're sitting in an asteroid belt trying to look for particular asteroids then you lose complete awareness of if whether or not a ship shows up on grid with you so we need to also tweak this tab so let's go into overview settings and we're going to add to our mining tab all of the ships so if we come down to the ships subcategory we can right click and select all and we are now going to save that save it to our mining tab and now our mining tab will also show if another ship shows up on grid with us well there is one more tweak that i would like us to make before we go and start actually looking for some asteroids staying safe as we do this we're going to make use of bookmarks quite a lot now, they can be kind of hard to access because I need to right click in space, I need to come down to locations, I need to come down to, in this case, the only one that I've got. So this is a bit of a clunky way of accessing bookmarks compared to the overview where I can just simply use my radial menu to warp to things. So if I wanted to go to this thing, I could this asteroid belt, I can just quickly open up my radial menu and warp to it. Now we can kind of set up a bit of a de facto overview for our bookmarks because bookmarks don't show on your overview here's how it works i'd like you to come to your neocom and i'd like you to come down to personal and people and places now if you don't have that permanently in your neocom click and drag it so that it is in your neocom menu which i do have it here 
I'm going to click on this and it will open up a window that has three different categories in it. Contacts, agents and locations. For now, I'd like you to click on locations and we are going to keep this window open. I'm just going to put it somewhere where it's kind of neat. In fact, let's move my drone window across, bring this down. And I can tidy this up. I can sort of squeeze up my columns a bit because I want to make sure. Oh, and also you can sort A to Z, Z to A. So I want to sort my jumps column A to Z. Now that shows me at zero jumps, which is the system I'm in, my list of bookmarks. Now the beauty of this is that I can access these bookmarks with my radial menu. I don't have to right click, go to locations, etc, etc. And being quick, having quick access to your bookmarks may be the one or two seconds difference that is the difference between you living and dying. So having this people and places window set up somewhere on your user interface where you can quickly access your bookmarks is going to help you stay safe. All right, here we are. We've landed on an asteroid belt that has some asteroids in it that we can mine. I can see in my tactical overlay, the asteroids in this space here. I can see some nasty rats over here. So for the moment, I'm going to ignore them. In fact, I'm going to actually just turn on my ripper and my afterburner. And I'm first thing I'm going to do is put some space away from the warp in point. So I'm actually going to come on the far side, on the right hand side of these asteroids. And I'll ignore the rats for the moment because I want to set up some bookmarks first of all in case someone was to come in on top of me here. So let's actually go a little bit past these asteroids. We've moved away from the warp in point, which is important because if a ship comes in after us, then they're going to land right on that spot that we warped in at. So we're going to move ourselves away from that space a little bit. I'm just, hopefully, I'm going to ignore these rats for the moment. I just want to show you and see if we can actually tank them. I got hooked up on an asteroid there for a, a moment. And I'm going to create a bookmark right at this point for the moment. So control B and I'm going to call this built because this is where I want to come back to, to mine. So I'm going to set, set that to submit in three hours. I don't want it living there all the time. And let's see if we can't deal with these three. Let's launch our drones. Let's put our afterburner on. Let's go trooper first. Orbit him at a thousand. Sick our drones on him. Let's web him up as well just to slow him down a bit. And there's our last rat shift R to immediately recall your drones so that you don't forget them. All right, good job. So here we are. We've dealt with our rats. Our awesome little alpha venture managed to stay cap stable and tank those three rats while we dealt with them. Now let's set up a couple of bookmarks that we can use to keep us safe because the idea of staying safe and alive while low sec mining is to be a slippery little sucker just to be something that can't be caught or that you're evasive you're you basically like a little you're on a covert ops mission basically so before i start mining i want to set up a couple of places that i can run to quickly if danger appears somewhere i can get off grid and away from danger now there are two options i'm going to show you one is what we call a long perch. The other one will be a short perch. Let's set up the long perch first of all. I am going to control B to call up my bookmarks. Let's call this long. I'm going to set it to submit in three hours. Now I am going to warp towards my initial safe spot and create a perch not far away from where we are. So let's do that and I'll show you the timing. Warp to this location. As soon as I start to see the wispy cloud kind of animation behind, I'm going to hit submit. So I'm waiting for the warp to start. There's my wispy cloud, hit submit, and I've created my long perch. Back in the belt now, I can see if I wanted to warp off to my long perch. What's the distance? It's... 
half a million k's away okay so it's off grid it's further away than the overview would show so if i get to that distance you'll see all my little asteroids that were back in that belt have now disappeared off my overview because i'm outside of that 8000 kilometer sphere in other words i'm off grid let's go back to the belt and set up a short perch all right so here we are back in the belt now we're going to try and set up a short perch something that's still on grid with where we're mining so let's call up our location uh, menu we'll call this one short now i'm going to zoom out because i want to make sure i get a bookmark that is outside of 150 kilometers because i need 150 kilometers distance before you can warp to something but i want to get it just outside of that if i can so i'm going to warp towards my long and try and hit my submit button just as I get outside of my 150 circle. So let's try that and see if we can do it. Hover over the submit, ready to hit it as soon as I get outside of 150. Now, hopefully I've got a bookmark there that's on grid. Let's go and find out. All right, we're back in the belt. Let's try and warp to my short and see what the distance is. 3,000 kilometers. Perfect. In fact, you'll see that when I get there, I'm now 3,000 Ks away from my asteroid belt, but I'm still on grid with it. I can still see all the asteroids. If there was a ship on grid, I'd still be able to see it. Right? So there's a long perch and a short perch. The short can be a little bit tricky. You might have to try once or twice or just practice to get your timing right, but it does give you different options for being able to evade trouble. In fact, let's have a look at how we do that. Let's walk back to the belt. All right, we're back at the belt. Now, why would you use one over the other? Well, here's a couple of pros and cons for each. The long perch is still close enough that you can warp off to it safely, but you'll then need to use your D scan to keep an eye back on the asteroid belt to see when the danger has cleared. You won't be able to visually see it on the overview. You'll have to use your D scan, which is a technique we looked at in the previous episode. With a short book uh, perch, you'll be able to see on the overview when the ship that has come in to annoy you has either left or potentially cloaked up where you'll be able to see uh, the name of the pilot and all the information that you'll get on an overview. You'll be actually on grid, but you'll be safe because you're three odd thousand kilometers away. And if they start to burn towards you, that's quite a distance. You can just have plenty of time to disappear. However, being in that short perch may be enough just to keep that person interested in you because they'll still see you on their overview so it's not like they'll, they'll know that you're still there they'll know that you're still interested they'll know that you're wanting to hang around whereas a long perch you'll be gone off their overview they'll still see you on d-scan um, but that might be enough just for them to think oh no this guy's slippery i'm going to move on it's totally up to you whatever style and method you feel more comfortable with uh, you've got the options at least now in your toolbox so here we are happily mining away on our little asteroid and we've got everything set up now we've got our d scan i've set it at 5 au i'm firing it off fairly regularly to see if anything shows up i've got my overview set up so that if something uncloaks right beside me it will instantly show up on my overview and i'm watching local now bear in mind the d scan and the overview won't show you cloaked ships we're just going to have to hope that if there's a cloaked ship that decloaks right beside you, these evasive tactics will still work for you quickly enough to get you out of danger. Watching local. What do I mean by watching local? We're looking for new people to come in. Now, you might be very sensitive to risk. You might be thinking, you know what? As soon as someone comes into local, I'm going to get ready to go. So one tip you can do to help you with that is you can control A. So if I hit control A, I'm going to click on a name in local control A, you'll see they all highlight. Now that's great, especially if you've got a long list of names, because as soon as somebody new comes into system, that will um, show up as an unhighlighted name. In fact, there I can see right now that a new pilot has come into system. They're not highlighted. So I'm starting to instantly think, hmm, this may be a problem. So I'm going to start the process of what we call aligning out. This is probably the most important thing you can do to stay alive in low sec. I'm going to align to my long bookmark. Nice and quick. I just can radio your menu, align to it. And you'll see my ship will now start to head towards that bookmark at speed. I will probably lose contact with my mining, but that's okay because at the moment now, the focus is on staying alive. Now I'm still on grid. I haven't left grid, but I'm waiting to see if anything shows up now, either on the overview 
or in the D scanner uh, that may be indicating that this ship is now actually coming in on me. So at this point, I'm now moving away from my asteroid. I've, I've forgotten about mining so much as survival now is my focus. I've aligned to my long. I can see on D scan that the Stratios is now showing up. So it may be that he's actually coming to uh, attack me. So I'm really wanting to watch my overview and my tactical overlay to see if he appears on grid. Because if he does, I instantly want to go to my long safe point. I'm aligned to it. I'm moving towards it. So I'm going to preload my radial menu and I'm going to hover over the warp to location button because if he shows up on grid now i instantly want to warp off i'm now in a very sort of switched on mode computer completely focused on seeing if anything comes on grid with me and there he is in fact i just see him come in on the tactical overlay i can see him here on the overview i've just let my finger go because i was already hovered over the warp to and before he can even land and start to lock me up i've now warped off ladies and gentlemen we just survived an attempted gank in our little alpha venture. Good job, well done. Okay, so now what? Well, I would like to go back to mining, but I'm not going to go back while he's still there. So I wanna keep an eye on my little asteroid belt. So I'm gonna call up my solar system map, I'm gonna center on myself and zoom in. I'm gonna bring my angle down to five degrees and I wanna find my little bookmark, which is here. Back in the belt so i'm going to radial menu and descan onto my bookmark and i can see that the stratios is still there so for whilst ever that is still showing up i know he's still in that belt okay i'm sitting here my bookmarks here and i'm just descanning onto that asteroid belt so keep descanning until he disappears. Now, if he disappears off my descan, that means one of two things. He's gone. Or oh, actually, I should be able, I should actually be also watching my local. Because if he leaves local, I know he's left the system altogether. If he leaves descan, but stays in local, I know one of two things. He's either left the asteroid belt or he's cloaked up. Now, that's just a judgment call you're going to have to make. So let's say he disappears. So I'm hitting my descan and I can see now that he's gone okay so probably the best way to go about this is I'm now going to walk back to my belt location but I'm instantly going to line back out to my safe spot just in case he was cloaked up and decides to uncloak as soon as I arrive back in the belt so once again I'm going to preload my radial menu over my long hover over the warp and as soon as my warp drive becomes available in fact I'm going to align to it rather than warp to it at this stage. Now I'm going to preload for warp and I'm just going to watch grid for a moment. Just see uh, if he just decloaks or if he's actually left and gone somewhere else. So there's this game. It's this game of cat and mouse. You've got somewhere to run to. You want to be aligned and heading towards that, ready to warp the instant he either decloaks or comes back in. Let's have a quick look at the, distance, the difference with a short um, bookmark. So in this case, I'm going to align to my short. Now if... The other ship becomes on a grid with me like i can just see here i can see billy daniels is on grid with me so i'm going to warp to my short i was pre-aligned okay. hovered over it ready to instantly warp off if someone decloaks or arrives I'm, I'm basically just trying to run at the first sign of trouble but the difference here is you can see i'm still on grid with him he's three thousand kilometers away so he can't get to me quickly but I can see that he's still there. So that's probably the, the difference between the short and the long. When you go to a long, you're gonna to have to use your D-scan, set it at five degree cone to keep an eye on it. Uh, if you use a short like this, you'll be able to see. But once again, I said, like I said, he, he still knows that I'm here. He might stay interested and go, all right, you wanna play games? Let's play a game. So part of, the, part of the game sometimes is actually just disappearing for a bit, boring the other person out. So they think, ah, this guy's too slippery not worth the effort i'm going to go to another system see what i can find and one of the other advantages with using a short bookmark is you can actually keep an eye on this guy and see what he does so if i alt and click on him i'll actually because i'm on grid i can look at his ship so i can see visually now whether or not he actually cloaks up or warps off i'll be able to see that because i'm visually like i've got eyes on his ship so if he just simply cloaks up then as i'm looking at him i will see the cloak animation 
And I know, <laughs> hey Billy, I've gone on to you, buddy. You've now disappeared off my overview, but I know you're there. I know you cloaked up. Another way you can do that without actually physically looking at them is watching the distance. Because if he cloaks, the distance isn't going to change. It's just, he'll just drop off. If he warps, you'll see this number. In fact, the other thing you might see if you expand out, you'll see his velocity. So if he cloaks, you're going to see something like this. He will just simply disappear off the overview. There's no change to his velocity. And there you go. I can assume now he's just cloaked up. There was no change to his velocity. He just disappeared off the overview. If he warps off and I'm watching him on the overview, I will actually see the velocity increase to a warp velocity. So at the moment he's obviously aligning and then suddenly massive velocity spike. In fact, I visually saw him disappear off there. I know he's gone. I know he's no longer there. I can warp straight back to my belt and resume my mining and repeat the cat and mouse game of running for cover whenever something comes by being aligned out to a safe spot. Well, guys, we've covered a lot today. I think we might actually just leave it there. Um, please go ahead and practice some of those skills. Practice them in high sec, maybe until you become comfortable with them. Setting up a belt bookmark, setting up either a long or a short. Personally, I prefer the shorts. They can be a little bit tricky to get right uh, the timing. But once you've got them, you can actually be a bit more in control of knowing what is the other guy doing. Uh, yeah, hopefully that gives you enough. We've got a great little ship that we can run our afterburner and our repper. We can deal with the rats. We can be slippery enough. And hopefully you can go and make some bank in low sec. I'd love to hear some of your experiences. If you have problems or if you find things you want to add, please speak up. Speaking of which, uh, I had a guy comment in the last video just to remind you, and I've forgotten his name, so shout out to you. You know who you are. Um, just to remind you that on the D scan, cloaked ships don't show, but also there are another category of ships called recon ships that do not show up on D scan, even though they are not cloaked. They will show up on your overview, but not on D scan. A little bit of a niche kind of thing, but hey, good to know. Great job. Well done.